Well, hi, everyone. This is Carmen Bertullo with the Fastener Training Minute coming to you from the Fastener Training Institute and AIM Testing Laboratory in beautiful El Cajon, California. I'm here fresh back from uh, two days teaching the Faster Training Institute Certified Fastener Specialist Program in La Mirada, California. The first two days were my part. One of the things we did there is we talked and taught about the torque tension relationship. As you know, that's one of my favorite topics. The great equation T equals KDP is taught and demonstrated where torque is equal to a K factor, the secret sauce number, times the diameter of the fastener, times the preload of the fastener. And we teach that and we demonstrate it with some instrumentation. And then later in the day, we break up into groups and each group gets to do some actual experimenting with torque wrenches and the infamous Skidmore Wilhelm bolt tension calibrator. One of the things that happened there was a little bit of an error that led our experiment in a certain direction, and we discovered something very interesting about fastener reusability. And when I come back, I'm going to talk generally about fastener reusability and tell you what happened with our experiment and the kind of data that we generated. Thanks, Carmen. This is Joe Morris with the Fastener Training Institute. It is so great to be back to in-person instruction, and I'm happy to announce some news. We have our acclaimed Certified Fastener Specialist week-long program has just undergone a complete refresh. We have a brand new curriculum. With the help from the Industrial Fasteners Institute, our Fastener Training Week now includes a lot more interactive content, revised class presentations, and expanded course outline. So our next week-long class is going to be hosted by the Pacific West Fastener Association in Los Angeles from November 29th through December 3rd. But before that, are any of you headed to Vegas? We are. FTI will be there and we are hosting a full day seminar instructed by Carmen Bertullo and Rob LaPointe from AIM Testing Lab. We're going to present value added service or costly mistake key elements for the entire supply chain. This full day program will show users and suppliers how to detect and prevent risks associated with value added fastener services and maximize opportunity for a great result. This class is truly for everybody. So if you're a fastener distributor, if you're an end user, or if you're a manufacturer, whether you're in purchasing, sales, engineering, quality, you know what, even operations, you really need this class. Everybody does secondary processes. So you can register through the IFE website or directly with FTI. And lastly, we have recently launched a brand new webinar series called Fastener Basics Like Never Before, sponsored by Brighton Best International. It's a 21-part webinar series presented by Carmen Vertulo. You can join anytime we record all the sessions and you can still complete the full series. Come on, let's face it. Carmen, he is the master at webinar fastener training classes and he uses his talents to present each topic creatively using a ton of cameras. He's got great stories and in so much detail, you'll walk away an expert. This program covers all topics relevant to new fast professionals and it's really a great precursor for any advanced learning that you want to do with FTI. So for more information about any of our webinars and our classes, please visit our website at www.fastenertraining.org. Thanks everyone. Now back to Carmen. Quality products, quality service, quality customers. That's 3Q Inc a fastener distributor unlike any you've worked with before. With its unique remote managed inventory stocking programs, wide array of secondary service offerings, and wholly owned cold forming capability, 3Q Inc. has been supporting fastener distributors since 2008. 3Q offers a wide range of 100% American-made fasteners, including 100% made-in-USA domestic lock washers, clevis pins and bolts, special ITW screw products, tap R, Boss Screw, TL Stud, and Griptide Inserts, SEMS Lock Washer Products, Split Lock Washers, Tooth Lock Washers, and Square Cone, as well as specialty and imported parts. Give 3Q a call today to discuss your needs and experience 3Q quality for yourself. 3Q Inc. www.3q-inc.com Well, welcome back, everyone. This is Carmen Bertullo returning with the Fastener Training Minute. Today, talking about fastener reusability and an experiment that we conducted at the Certified Fastener Specialist Training Program just this week. 
One of the things that end users often wonder, and even OEMs often wonder, is once a fastener has been installed and tightened, presumably everything is correct, work as advertised, and then it's taken apart. When we put it back together, do we expect that fastener to behave in the same way? In other words, if we tightened it initially to a certain torque and achieved a certain clamp load, would we expect to be able to receive or recreate that same clamp load with the same torque? OEMs advertise in their maintenance and repair bulletins and instructions, torque values when parts are taken apart and put back together, theoretically based on the torque value that they originally used. The experiment that we did at the Fastener Training Institute program involved using zinc-plated nuts, bolts, and washers, 3816 diameter. And what we were expecting to do in our experiment was we were simply going to tighten them down with the zinc plating, find out what the K factor would be, which normally would be 0.22 for zinc, and then add some lubrication and see how that lubrication would affect the clamp load. Now, I have done this many, many times over the years in the classroom and in the laboratory and for customers and clients. And so I have the opinion that zinc as a K factor control coating is notoriously unreliable. Even though the advertised K factor is 0.22, I've seen it anywhere as low as 0.16 up to 0.25. And the reason for that generally would be, and I'm talking about under controlled conditions, not like stuff goes sideways in the skid more with the torque wrench in the laboratory. However, it's not just the zinc that determines the K factor. Even to a larger extent, it's the top coating that goes on the zinc, sometimes called the passivation coating. And normally it's some kind of chromate, hexavalent chrome, trivalent chromate, or perhaps some other kind of non-hexavalent chrome that's not trivalent. Whatever the uh, plating applicator chooses to use that meets the requirements for the salt spray test that they would achieve the correct corrosion resistance. Zinc generally does not come with a stated or guaranteed K factor. So whatever they use is what you get and you may or may not know. Now, fortunately, Folks who use zinc as a fastener coating probably are not using that fastener in a critical application where the K factor being off by a few points is going to make the wheels come off the wagon. But many other applications for fasteners do require an accurate and consistent K factor, and they tend to either shy away from zinc or if they want to use zinc, they will specify a lubrication type top coat that will produce at least, if not a low, at least a very tightly controlled K factor. Well, what happened in our experiment after we put the first bolt in and we got a K factor, it was kind of low. I think it was around 0.19. And then we were supposed to remove that bolt and nut and put a fresh one in with some lubrication, but we failed to remove it. We got sidetracked in a conversation and we ended up retightening that same bolt and we got a K factor of 0.26, drove it through the roof. Once we figured out what happened, we decided we were going to change our experiment from what happens with the lubrication to what happens on the second tightening. Now, we had four groups of six people in each group. Each group got to do three experiments with a first and second tightening, so that's quite a number of experiments. And what we discovered first off was that the K factor on our zinc on the first tightening ranged between 0.19 on the low side up to 0.24 on the high side. About what you would expect for zinc. It really kind of met the, the advertised expectation. I was surprised at that. However, on the second tightening, every one of them added at least five points to the K factor. They went as high as 0.36. Most of them were over 0.30. So what we discovered was that on the second tightening of the bolt, something deteriorates in the top coat that makes it so that we no longer have the same torque tension relationship. Therefore, when we maintenance that item, we should not be able to expect to get a good, consistent, reliable clamp load compared to the original assembly. So that reads us into fastener reusability. If we're going to reuse fasteners, that's something we need to be aware of. 
Um, I did have a case once where we did the same experiment for a client. They had cadmium plated fasteners to determine whether or not they should use a different maintenance torque than the original assembly torque. It turned out in that case that cadmium did not deteriorate. It worked very well. Cadmium is a great torque tension control coating. So we didn't have to change anything. But it might be that if you are producing product with zinc plated hardware and you expect it to be maintenance in the field, you may need to increase the torque for the maintenance operation compared to the original assembly operation to produce the same torque tension relationship. It was a fun experiment. The students enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. We'll probably make a more formal version of it sometime and maybe uh, turn it into a magazine article. Well, this is uh, Ben Carmen Vertula with your Fastener Training Minute. I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks for listening.